think it would be really nice to kind of jump into discussion as much as possible, but maybe for helping, we can just give some small orientation. I mean, in addition to what you have already kind of set out. Um, one is about ourselves. I mean, uh, in, in a sense, I think the intuition of trying to initiate a space like 16 Beaver, and uh, I don't see it as extremely unique, but it is each each occasion is is singular. No, I mean it, each each occasion involves certain people, certain inertia, uh, struggles, periods of time, conditions, and so uh, we we inherit also a lot of different things around us. So we're, you know it's not isolated. Um, histories and so in in our sense I mean um, I could say at least not in terms of founding but there are different people probably that go to New York for various reasons but um, at, at that time in 99 I mean I didn't have personally many choices legally so that was like a the closest i could find to a place where i i could imagine kind of rebellious communities artists people who were thinking about another way of living thinking and uh and so i went there and in mid 90s and and found it to be very difficult to find that kind of community basically um that you could be in school you could be in various situations but uh, what whatever you had imagined as populating that kind of urban environment wasn't there <laughs> was found missing I mean you had openings you had kind of events and uh, even if you went to kind of let's say more structured political spaces they were always asking you for money um, not all of them but enough of them or they had such a strong kind of sort of uh, identification culture uh that that you know could be you felt that it was already something structured it wasn't open in a way but but mainly this kind of uh, uh created a desire to find uh that situation and uh, so so being also uh studying psychology or whatever i mean you know i'm giving some personal because i think it's important sometimes each each person's trajectory how they arrive to something so in that case it was like uh you know i'm originally from iran i'm are stateless legally i'm looking for kind of a community to understand also like whatever the university hasn't really taught which is like all the conditions that uh, that have forced me to live in these sort of uh, yeah terms and socially politically uh, inadequate to respond to all these uh, larger forces and uh, finding a language with others to to also make sense of that reality so um, I, I found myself in art more as a kind of refuge, uh, thinking I'm going to make, you know, films or things that try to talk through and give, like, create a clinic or a space of thinking around all these sort of maladies, social, political, personal, everything that I've been around. And, and I can't do that in isolation. So that was my desire to try to look for that space. And I think, you know, I personally found enough people around me that were also feeling that same thing. So I think that's how so, what I was describing is like these trajectories. And so from the beginning, uh, there's already needs, desires that predate any founding or initiating and, and, and they have to do with your own needs and experiences. So we found this kind of space near wall street we thought it was interesting because of the association with wall street we we 
we rent was not so much. We also thought, well, we're not going to be gentrifying. It's already the the locus of gen gentrifying, even though it's uh, under um, you know underutilized, probably because the infrastructure was old for the new economy uh, that was kind of burgeoning in the late 90s. Seattle had, was just unfolding. And so it's in that kind of uh, atmosphere. Uh, Zapatismo had already kind of gone on course for, for years now. And maybe I would say so besides the kind of alter globalization, anti-globalization kind of movement, the political atmosphere also included that very strong movement that I think also knowingly or unknowingly was was we, we were also going to be affected by a lot and um, so one other thing was like just trying to think about how we were going to do that organize that well we were thinking okay there's a general modus operandi uh, in in places like New York, artists renovate a place, they take a lease, they take the risk, and then once they renovate, they kind of win themselves their own studio, their own personal space. So the economics were another part of it. And, and we thought, well, we, we can renovate the space and uh, use some aspect, uh, some part of it is like a common studio, uh for meeting for hosting uh readings discussions sharing and so it really started out as a kind of just like that learning together thinking together but also a space that wouldn't uh kind of ghettoize art as like we're just going to talk about each other's work and art i mean we wanted to talk about art politics philosophy, life. So in a way also, and, and keep it free and open. And there was no like a collective group in that sense. And actually, you know, as I, I took a lease with another friend at the time, and then, uh, you know, within the first months, there was a huge like uh, split that was formed because this person, that had taken the lease with me started thinking like, okay, we gotta um, become a nonprofit. Someone wants to give us a, a lot of money. And it was the dot com period. And uh, initially, my response was like, great, we had taken on some debt to renovate. And then, and then we were like, uh, but that that would be pretty terrible. I mean, maybe we should talk with everybody about it because it's going to change the dynamics immediately if we accept this money. And uh, I think from that point, the, the person probably interpreted me as an enemy. And so uh, somehow almost two factions emerged in the space. That's already in the first year. And one was this kind of amorphous reading group, meeting group, and the other was like a kind of oriented towards a nonprofit and making a kind of organization with president and executive director. But that was really formative struggle because we, we had to learn our way through what we were actually wanting not to become. We saw it immediately emerging. And, uh, you know, so we had to protect over time. I mean, we, you know, that person left and initially we thought, well, we could share the space. You do your thing and we do our thing. But uh, the, the strategy from that uh, other side was all or nothing. So we ended up kind of uh, holding space finally and going more towards what we imagined, which was to not become a nonprofit, to try to remain autonomous in our way of uh, funding the space. So we rented studios, uh, initially hoping comrades would be kind of artists, people who were also politically inclined could accept a smaller space to share kind of a communal space that we could have meetings in. But it didn't always work out uh, perfectly. Sometimes we had to accept like graphic designers, photographers, whatever, uh, but that didn't make them part of that group. 
of organizers. I mean, they could just by coming on Mondays, we were meeting then regularly. And anyway, so that, that's a kind of a prehistory, a little bit. So we decided to keep it like we never, we, we finished having the space in end of 2014, beginning of 2015 was done. And um, there's a lot to say about these matters, you know, practical things, rent struggles, all kinds of stuff like that. But I think uh, the, the most important is that we, we just, we never sought grants, we never got grants, we never tried to create uh, employees. And, and that kept its even, it, yeah, it's, it's not even volunteers. I mean, it was basically a place for us to gather and to share life together, you know? It wasn't like, oh, we got volunteers and we got the, uh, you know, if Noah came and he did that kind of, uh, we did that meeting and somebody said, let's do something else, that's it. Like if enough people were interested, something else would happen. So it wasn't, it's porous, informal. And in that sense, I mean, all the weakness and strength of the, the, the process was also connected to to that, I mean, I would say, obviously, in the context of, of that history of the space, um, there were formative moments, but I think we kind of learned, the main aspect of it was like learning together, actually. Like everything that I know <laughs> in relation to the world, I would say, and my relation to the world is constituted through that process. It's not, it didn't happen before, you know, I, I, I was pretty ignorant, I think, before um, to a lot of things. I mean, even though on a lot of levels, I, mean, I, I, I felt and understood things passively through being in Iran, living through the revolution, being displaced, all these things. But like, uh, you don't really understand what's happening to you. You need to create space to think with others. And that's the kind of, I think, the exigency. So maybe um, already I would introduce this question, which is these spaces that we think are political spaces, um, how, I mean, in a way, I, I would say that what we have tried and are still trying is to try to imagine or work towards something that doesn't separate any part of our life. You know, what we managed in, in 16 Beaver was largely like a, um, communizing our intellectual side of life and time. And then we slowly got a kitchen. We were able to cook together, gather, you know, create warmth, do more than just uh, talking uh, around books or inviting people to speak. But, but uh, you know, also like, film screenings, doing things that kind of were beginning to unsettle all the boundaries that exist, you know, um, doing things like Martin knows, I mean, just really trying. Uh, and I really think even though we had the space 16 years, maybe we got to like 5% of the potentiality of what we could do. I think Occupy was the only moment that we got like anywhere past, like maybe we got to 20% of its possibility and still it, it was limited, you know, but, but at least physically in that year and a half or two of intensity, I mean, it was pretty much being used all the time, even in at night, you know, even in uh, midnight past, you know, mornings, making signs, doing things, so that was like a something I would say were the maybe the ripest fruits of our efforts came in that period where really like yes it's true it became a movement space you know in that sense it was hosting this kind of energy and I think if you don't do the work of you know preparing the field for something like that it doesn't mean that we 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 were just a part of it but I think we did a lot of work to allow something for something like that to be able to happen, you know, uh, and, and 
for us to have the space to be able to give it, you know. Uh, but it wasn't even like, you know, let's say you have a nonprofit, which, you know, we, um, when we wanted to take, because we had two floors at some point in this building, and the second floor we got because we were trying to organize things around the Iraq war. And that was in 2003. And we, we were asking nonprofits that had big spaces, can we use your space? And they were all like giving us, you know, either price lists or giving us calendars that said, you know, uh, maybe we can't fit it in. And, so we got that fourth floor exactly because we were doing more political meetings and we needed bigger space. And so just small things like that, but that took a lot of sweat, work, to gut it, to renovate it, to do it with our, you know, our hands and not hire people to do it. But it, that, that, that space emerged because of a need for organizing and having large groups for political meetings that that art spaces who talk about politics just didn't give that space when it was needed. Or they would do it if you had like a list of well-known people, you know? And, um, you know, so you can imagine during Occupy, like it's a funny situation. There was artist space and there was a, like artists wanted to occupy it. I mean, with 16 Beaver, for instance, it was it? <laughs> And yeah, there was an occupation, right? We, you know, some of our comrades went there, but uh, including some <laughs> a comrade sitting next to me. But I mean, there was like an absurd situation, you know. I mean, um, that you would have to occupy spaces that supposedly are there to, uh, you know, host uh, a thought struggle. So we, we, you know, I'm just uh, thinking through how that space has to be created where there's not, it's not, you know, let's occupy 16 Beaver. I mean, it was, <laughs> it was the place uh, to construct it, to be able to host that, you know, to be able to hold that uh, movement. So in that sense, maybe movement space. Uh, and in that space, it's interesting because it was, let's say, a, a lot of different parts of our community were almost also in different groups of the movement. So that was another interesting aspect of it in this kind of, let's say, initial frustration with like hyper -identif identified spaces overcoated by certain politics, let's say. Uh, you know, if they existed at all in New York, try to create like a space where different groups could meet and talk and think together. So that, that was another part of our kind of, let's say politics that would be maybe closer to what maybe George was trying to talk about movement space. So at least, of course, everybody involved had their kind of politics and maybe it could change through learning together but but the idea was like uh learning our way through this so we've got to be open and just uh obviously we were not entertaining like right-wing thinking or <laughs> you know uh but but we we understood that within a left let's say whatever was that tradition there are all sorts of questions so we needed to create a space to kind of differentiate, uh, discover, find our kind of elders, it was intergenerational space. So uh, trying to also reach out to older people that we knew that had lived through other periods. Um, so this, I don't know, it's not a systematic way of giving you a, a sense of the, the space, but that was my attempt to try to, to give a, a little bit of an outline. And, uh, you know, there's a lot more to say, but it, I think it'll come up in conversation. I mean, maybe you think so. I missed something uh, that would be good to add? No, not a lot in relation to what you said. 
I was thinking, and what Noah said, um, when, you know, apropos of movement spaces, I immediately thought uh, maybe movement times of thinking uh, time differently and even throughout this kind of uh, telling of the story of the prehistory, let's say, or the whatever one has uh, lived uh, in 16 Beaver, the, the question of time and, and sharing and giving time is also very important to maybe what one is, uh, we are trying to speak about. Um, and, uh, you know, when you, when you came to that point of like, oh, how 5% of what was a potential to use the space and occupy 20% of the use, well, the interesting thing, it's okay, this, there was the square in Occupy, there is this, it's really the question of the, the living time and the sharing time that one decides during Occupy, some had 100% to share, and this was the special thing. Usually people are very busy and not having time. Uh, and so this kind of uh, creation of different rhythms and different, uh, modes of relating to time. I think it was a crucial even at the beginning of 16 Beaver, as important as the space, because of course you need a place to, to be there in that time, but to regularize it initially or find, of course there are many ways to do it. It doesn't have to be that. It was Monday night. How many years Monday night, Monday night? And then it's not this kind of nervosity. When should we meet next? and what time and and so in a way it becomes a kind of a habit and a rhythm of the week uh it it it, it is a very powerful also uh i don't know what to say something um the other thing is also the kind of constant relation of how one should relate uh, in in to the spaces that one relates to. And I think, uh, okay, giving time to the common, but also the, the, the question of in storing and, and let's say this move with the friend you took, the space, Elise, and all this kind of stuff is, a, is an idea of a preparation and inspiration for something that you feel you have an intuition is important beyond what you personally you know need i mean of course some people will install their own career they're installing preparing for that <laughs> making everybody move in this way but if you have that there is also something to be thought about is also this what is it that one needs to install and i mean to go back to the question of time is also the question of uh, of history maybe and and also this feeling maybe what you are doing of also creation of uh, um, a ability to speak of of where we are coming from in a way narrating our own histories and seeing where where are we coming from it's not something given where do we come from and it's something also actively created. It's it's uh, projected. It's not something that is more in a as in a book. You know, this revolution, that revolution only. Maybe it is, but but in a way to see what, where we are coming from and how we want to to activate that, to actualize that. And and sometimes, yeah, maybe we, yeah, you know, the question of of the untimely can come in of of a necessity to think against one's own time possibly and what that would mean but that's i'm going on a, a different layer now so more like that it's uh it's more in relation to what you all said and maybe i mean if i could add something politically relating to the and alter globalization and the Zapatista, I mean, as a kind of uh, something resonant in addition to the Iraq wars and all of that, I mean, I think 
you know, community, revolution. There were various kind of, uh, let's say, questions that were uh, constantly uh, threading, weaving our, our conversations together. And uh, I would say more and more, I realized, in, you know, now we're jumping into 2020. You know, and let's use some of the language of tw like what we're thinking through right now. And I would say like what we confronted was like a social infrastructure of like white supremacy and coloniality for me, in addition to whatever would be capitalist, patriarchal kind of social infrastructure, museums, galleries, university, all of it. And I didn't have a language for that, but I understood also that even like uh, certain ways that politics distributed itself down to like spaces carried with it some codes or some terms that were still connected to those infrastructures. And so I think we've been trying to search for what could be something that is also oriented from a different cosmology or a different constellation of thoughts and ways of relating, which I think, given that many of the people involved in 16 Beaver also came from other places, whether it's Mexico, India, Pakistan, wherever it, it would be, even Ireland, <laughs> you know, it's not to just, uh, it, it just colonized places, places that have also been kind of, uh, maybe still held other ways of relation, sensing on it. So that's been another, I think, important element of ours, which created some discomfort with movement and like certain kinds of activism that always seem to kind of go towards professionalized, uh, almost specialized uh, bodies. You know, so I think something about the space is also always and whatever we've been interested in uh, kind of thinking through is a kind of question of a form of life that would not separate uh, all these kind of aspects of what, what we do think, you know, so kind of em embodying more than prefiguring even the politics and way of life or you know form of life that we we think can kind of um is is organizing at the end for us you know if there would be a question of organization um and we're still kind of trying moving towards that so in that sense i would say you know if there was even a yeah that's enough i think but just to put that in that, that I feel that there's been this question that maybe comes from another trajectory that is struggling against beyond just capitalism, you know? So a really important person for us in space has been like Ben Morea, for example, one of, the, you know, he became, uh, he was someone involved with Black Mask up against the wall in the 60s, very militant, like anarchist group that called themselves a family in, in, in New York. And uh, he became a big contributor to the space, but we brought him out of kind of, after many years of being invisible, he came and uh, then continued to frequent the space. And he lived uh, after the 60s, 40 years with, uh, in, you know, First Nations people, communities. And, uh, you know, so we've learned also a lot with him. I think that there are interesting trajectories also through our elders that we can understand. Like he really felt Black Mask is a play on uh, Black Skin, White Mask of Fanon. And so in that period, he was already seeing limitations of a certain kind of struggle that was a little blind or not sufficiently 
humble enough to understand like these other trajectories um, that could enrich like a new way of relating to one another or to life itself and reclaiming that that maybe certain trajectories of left uh, excluded and and so I don't know I think that that's also another important thing to think about in our conversation mm. and uh, just to ask a bit more on uh, about your space um, and um, George and Sylvia had quite an impact uh, on 16 Beaver for some time and uh, how did this encounter happen and how would you say it kind of uh, changed your thinking and your understanding of say uh, comments and uh, these kind of things? Yeah, well Midnight Notes is a, another important collective you know that for years published and um, a friend and somebody, you know, always 16 Beaver is animator is a nice word and because it's always been animated by, by a certain constellation or assemblage of people, uh, ideas and connections uh, to others, you know, uh, affinities to others. So our friend Malev, uh, who's publishing Common Notions. Um, he, he's been very involved at 16 Beaver for many years, and he was connected to the writings of Midnight Notes more, and, uh, you, you know, so we were always interested in doing something with Midnight Notes, and finally uh, we, we, we were able to just organize some meetings with uh, Sylvia and George, and I mean, we've been also looking for commonalities between the different groups and movements that came through the space to talk about their struggles and our own, you know. So, so the question of commons has resonated a lot more as a way of trying to bring together various struggles. And also, I think Sylvia's work in you know, obviously is indispensable. That kind of orientation of feminist thought that is more about changing everything. You know, it's not about like fitting the category of women into existing structures, but it's like uh, changing the whole way we, we live. So that, that has also had a huge kind of richness of helping us see so I think each I mean they also have been part of 16 Beaver I mean this is I think the kind of importance of creating intergenerational spaces because they've organized also in the space and so it's you know it's it's like not a subject object relation it's like you creating a space that you're becoming communal, you're becoming one, you know, with one another, something new and, and, uh, you know, it's, a, it's still, it's still happening. <laughs> and so, and all this, um, I don't know, yeah, like when you hear the story and yeah, I guess I don't want to call you elder cause that would be a bit uh, overkill, but, uh, I think there's some kind of intergenerational relationship between say you and others and like some of the people who came in a bit more recently, like um, uh, some of us and uh, like, yeah, like how would you say uh, in Lithuania <laughs> your kind of um, uh, encounters with uh, spaces uh, came to happen with others and like how do you kind of relate or contrast your personal trajectory of yeah. uh, your path of autonomy with these guys? Well, um, you know, not to sound uh, as elderly and uh, nostalgic, but uh, to tell you the truth, uh, some, of the, some of the wording and some of the kind of, you know, history and emotions expressed, uh, it really gives me almost uh, goosebumps because I definitely can uh, relate very much and I think 
you know, the contexts are very different, the scales are different, maybe also the, you know, how much things developed and how much they haven't, but, uh, but sort of uh, more general uh, impulses, I think, why, you know, certain spaces uh, were uh, appearing and the kind of maybe not very well um, articulated and this is what I also like, like not really knowing, but just feeling that, you know, something's missing and something that you would like to do, but, but it's just not there. And the kind of a more usual um, <clears throat> institutions, perhaps, uh, or something, or, or sort of the world, the way it exists, uh, you want to rebel against it, but maybe you don't have neither means nor uh you know discourse to to tell exactly uh you know why you feel you don't belong somewhere or, or you are against something and and there therefore uh you try to look for something else and uh, try to create that even in you know sort of embryonic forms but uh but i think uh yeah for me very much rings the bell and in my own sort of trajectory trajectory you know even if in some most i wasn't maybe a central figure but uh, i was somehow you know sort of one of those people that very much tried to articulate uh, the need for for space and uh, i guess to this day i think um, uh, sort of looking back at uh, all kinds of initiatives and developments and groupings and so on in Lithuania, I think um, mainly they did uh, better in my understanding of what it means, uh, these sort of more political communities or, or, or sort of communities that in whatever means um, try to sort of stick together for a shared um, dissatisfaction with, with the world. No? And, uh, and I think those groups that um, invested themselves in space, and even if they moved on to onto something else, I think uh, as a rule um, had a sort of uh, bigger effect. Or, or to me, it looked like uh, you know, without that element, and also maybe speaking from the you know the 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 contemporary time of 2020 and uh, I guess the last decade of uh, so much of things going online and many things being reconfigured I think um, you know it's difficult uh, um, I'm not a believer in the um, just I mean I'm not against it but I'm not uh, I don't see the this full potential of sort of dominating discourse by some kind of online means or you know having uh, sort of virtual relationships and uh, virtual revolutions and so on it's to me um there is something more i think um the the spaces maybe happen for all these more abstract means or maybe for this political grouping but i think it's also important uh, the relationship and the, the friendships that uh, that develop and um, you know it, it's um, it's not only instrumental means of jumping into something else but it can jump and and, and it does jump and um, things transform but uh, I think uh, the sort of space to of sociality and of not feeling restrained by a certain kind of uh, you know, institutional protocols or the uh, certain kinds of attachments which sooner or later in one way or the other uh, you know, gives uh, comes with the with the strings attached I think uh, this is what for me um, this autonomous space uh, means it's a space of experimentation and um, you know there is something um, something loose about it and even you know the people involved can have certain ideas and uh, 
certain political trajectory and so on, but uh, I really appreciate uh, appreciated this uh, um, this talk and uh, the sort of this history because I think uh, also the the intermixing and leaving it open um, definitely can can uh, enrich no. So that's maybe a bit more of a general note and maybe just a few details i guess uh, you know from my own uh, um, sort of um, history is that um, i guess i came um, as a teenager sort of in the mid 90s got interested in punk and through punk i got to know kind of anarchism but then basically I've realized that um, you know there wasn't much of anarchism being practiced or or sort of taken seriously and so on. So um, I guess um, by um, so yeah, and th this is basically the sort of after 2000, I lived for a little bit in Berlin, and when I came back to Lithuania, I um, really sort of did my, a bit of a uh, pushing to, even while living in Berlin, um, I lived there over a year, but I uh, was coming back to Lithuania, and sort of pushing a little bit more uh, to sort of engage this whole community in uh, certain topics, whether it would be this sort of self-education or uh, certain kinds of uh, protests or sort of expanding the space not to be just uh, you know for the music but also kind of uh, the embryonic forms of uh, some kind of uh, info shop and uh, you know sharing food and uh, started later doing you know like cinema and discussion and all kinds of things. I mean, the not very uh, maybe creative ways, but I think for that time it was something that was really sort of you know, expanding a little bit of this repertoire. And uh, for me, music was not uh, um, sort of central central issue, but uh, I felt that there was a. Um, receptivity you now to to go beyond <clears throat> beyond this sort of just um, um, very musical sort of subcultural lifestyle and then um, yeah there was there were things uh, happening uh, with, uh, with uh, squatting and then kind of expanding that space you know it was not very official uh, and, and little is I guess like the US now is also but uh, not very squatting friendly but uh, even if it wasn't very open space uh, as sort of the you know visible it was still kind of the uh, semi invisible but um, there were there were motions no people were coming and uh, ideas being exchanged and some sort of uh, organizing towards certain things were happening and I think um, yeah, and then there were um, several info shops that uh, um, mainly uh, Denisas that I think he might be listening now, or I know that he's uh, a little bit involved in this talk. Um, that sort of uh, took on on uh, establishing, and I was uh, contributing, and I think that also created this sort of. Uh, community that was really going beyond uh, this kind of subcultural roots into a little bit more of a, the idea of the social center and info shop and uh, all the events and the library and uh, all kinds of things. Um, and then another thing that uh, from my own also, then I lived in the US for quite some time. When I came back, I, I was involved uh, with these info shops and uh, another initiative that was much more this sort of uh, discursive, discursive left, no, the, the more like uh, anarchist, but more um, uh, interested, not so much in the 
sort of this shared uh, common life as much as, as possible and shared space, but uh, having a website and, uh, and uh, publishing things and uh, also doing this uh, free university. And uh, it continued for, for quite a few years, but I think it died out. And uh, my attempt was uh, several times to have these larger gatherings to, to also think about uh, uh, the sort of the model with its advantages and disadvantages. And I was pushing for uh, maybe that you know, we should get a space and maybe having uh, um, a collective effort and something really sort of material to take care of it also can kind of strengthen this kind of community and uh, give give a little bit of a of a more uh, more of a ground so on the one hand and this is sort of a paradox and this is why i made a comment about this sort of this uh, you know virtual world and uh, virtual activism or whatever is that um, to some extent, it, it got uh, so much more publicity, you know, it was so many more people got involved and, and so on. But, but at the same time, this community was, you know, the reading, reading articles or coming to, to a lecture. But uh, then, you know, people would come for just sort of, a, in a way, to put it simply, kind of to consume this information and then they would leave. And there was no feeling of, uh, of uh, continuation. Um, and yeah, and then I guess, uh, yeah, you know, and also since the kind of 2005, three, four, five, basically in this new, new millennium, there were also times when a bit related to this punk scene, there were things happening in different um, in different cities like small centers opening up and so on but uh, many of them didn't really uh, live that long and um, and I guess when was it about 2012 um, things started to form a little bit in uh, in Kaunas, and I think um, the sort of the the center of gravity moved a little bit from Vilnius to Kaunas. And I mean, it's up for debate, but uh, in my opinion, and um, and it was more like a loose collective, and then maybe a bit uh, more structured collective. But then I think. Um, uh, <coughs> sorry. Um, there was for a half a year a squat, and I think this sort of a collective experience of of having a space really um, strengthened the the bonds and the the why uh, I think um, it still goes on, and uh, there are all kinds of initiatives and uh, spin-offs of the of this core group and this experience uh, doing things now, like uh, having a union and the media platform and uh, all kinds of different different organizational um, efforts. So, yeah, I mean, I'm sure I'm leaving things out and, uh, you know, it's not, uh, I think, um, um, my role here is not to give a super detailed uh, detailed um, reflection or uh, history, but uh, very much, uh, as I said, uh, identify and uh, have a sort of, um, you know, I think it, um, it proves somewhat the point that uh, you know it's we're not living in some kind of post space uh, era where it's you know uh, it's it's not relevant and I, I think it is it is very relevant and it's also living now in many countries in this quarantine I think we all very much uh, understand uh, this role of uh, 
of being um, sort of, you know, the gatherings of bodies, it's just uh, irreplaceable. And I think, uh, and I hope uh, that's not going to change. So, yeah, but let's, let's talk more. Mm. Mm. I mean, one thing that seems uh, place really brings out is the, the politics of um, geography. And uh, like when you're just living in your house or something, like it has a way that you just try to put things in the background or you, or you just go to the shop or go somewhere in the city, but like uh, you don't feel like you're inhabiting the space, but using it as a service, something like this, an exchange relation. And uh, once a space appears that you kind of cultivate and build collectively, uh, it really shows up so much how you kind of uh, inhabit your environments and like the different politics that inform it. And like uh, one topic that's I think been, I was uh, a kind of uh, continuous discussion is this relation between like, uh, yeah, like being outside of uh, central districts and kind of having a place where like you can kind of build like uh, neighborhoods and like root yourself um, and like a space that's like uh, central and uh, kind of has this uh, picks up on the flows and uh, maybe a question for uh, Irene and Renee like um, as you've kind of disembodied and otherly embodied spaces uh, over time like how did your uh, relation to uh, places and spaces change as you left say a kind of yeah the, the center of finance and uh, like uh, wall street and uh, this kind of hyper capitalist landscape that you kind of occupied on the interest in the kind of fissures and interstices to like uh, maybe where you are uh, now or who you're passing through uh, like uh, as your understanding of like uh, the politics of um of environment, so uh, like, uh, have you taken different orientations or have reflections on something like this? Let me try to start something. Uh, I mean, as uh, as as uh, 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 you were speaking, I don't know. Also, I was thinking um, in relation to this kind of feeling uncomfortable about all, you know, as if there is some kind of uh, draft or something we are being pushed in a certain direction definitely there is that uh, in relation to um, you know meeting online and all that but the where are, where is the question actually for me uh, I just go back a little bit thinking of uh, um, the spaces and what we are talking about, autonomous spaces, and uh, think of a of a like uh, of a topography or of a map of these spaces. You know, apropos of, of what you're saying, Noah, the geography. So we can think of of all the affinity spaces we different of us feel like that affinity to the space or we call it space of autonomy or movement spaces and um, it feels like it's a, almost a dynamic map where these like uh, little let's say circles of these different uh, spaces and they are being uh, shaped moved squished around based on everything around us uh, the whole world's history current past what is happening now what has happened all that we are thinking about that moves us all that what you say that something makes you dissatisfied so basically there is this map of satisfaction dissatisfaction as a great scale and then you have the the spaces and one is projecting something that let's say we don't want it to be the dissatisfaction we don't want it to be the space of separation of isolation of uh whether it's gender or 
or it's colonial or whether it's hierarchy, patriarchy, on, on every level and in each, uh, or neoliberal or capitalist or this or that. So in a way, these are not fixed either. They are constantly being moved. I mean, think of, well, okay, these are forces that are enacting us. Let's say the question of space is one of them. And it is, let's say, one of the elements of that, like push is the kind of uh, space is basically money that you have to have rent. You can also uh, uh, occupy in, in some places. But even that also, you have the politics of the city coming to evict people. And so in a way, it's all these forces that are coming from the the life, the reality, the so-called power that is not power, it's these forces that are constantly arriving at us, whether it's the spaces, arriving at these spaces, evicting the spaces, forcing a, a legal case on the space, or evicting, or in, you know, in some cases, uh, whatever. Um, so in a way, uh, this kind of uh, uh, current moment, you know, the, the, the coronavirus is, is not, uh, 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 let's say... Anomaly. Uh, yeah, it's also a manifestation of something that has been going on in this larger field of satisfaction, larger fields of these forces that are going further and further, even in the middle of the, the, the crisis of, of Corona. Well, you know, the words are insufficient and you even fall in, in, in a language that's not yours, you know, crisis of Corona, I don't know. Mm. I mean, it's more, um, yeah, the question is what, how, how to, it's not possible to, to, that's why I wanted to go to this geography, to the map of forces, satisfaction, dissatisfaction, to be able to see that, well, we are not alone, and to be able to see these forces. And in a way, like sometimes you say, you say Rene, well, maybe this time of meeting online uh, is, is, a, is a preparation for when we can really meet in person, we know each other better, or or, uh, or Jean-Luc Nancy, when we met the first time in the assemblies that, uh, you know, we are meeting at 16 Beaver in, in, a, in an assembly online. And then and, and precisely initially, we were also like, what is this? What are we doing? Are we falling into kind of following a protocol of like what is demanded of us and so on? Well, what he said, well, this is not nothing. You know, that was his thing, this to think about, this is not nothing. So I don't want to say, well, this is a great uh, opportunity for us or this, because I, I am aware that a lot of people, this be, has become for them a, 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 a dic dictator or a, a dictation. I, I don't know how to say, because they are forced. They are forced to work online. They are constantly online and uh, they are very tired, exhausted. So the acceleration that BIFO has been talking about in the psychic uh, sphere, uh, possibly this will, will show much more devastating kind of mining of psychic people on a bigger level. Of course, we are aware of that. But nonetheless, we are also not, uh, you know, this is the, 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 the strength of being in a, in a common space of spaces of autonomy of these paths that we know where we are coming from. Not we know, we are sure. We are searching constantly. This is for me also a search constantly being of part of 16 Beaver, every opportunity to understand aha, this is where I'm coming from, actually. So because it is a construction. Some people go with a kind of a family narrative, well, we were a great family, we had huge whatever, you know, this is a, can be a bourgeois, even aristocratic. Well, we can also construct our own narrative that nurtures our commons and our being together. It doesn't have to be that representation, ridiculous narrative of, of of feeling good because it looks this, you know? So there is difference, there is difference also in, in a relation to history that is more a living history that is also 
history of resistance, resisting history at the same time. I don't know, I mean, it's abstract maybe, but. Yeah. No, I mean, there's a lot uh, that, that uh, one could say, but one, just quickly, I'll try to add something so we don't talk too much, but uh, I think maybe m more than movement, I would say like in this moment, kind of the question is what what's even beyond movement, like in the sense of maybe was occupied like a movement, you know, was was what happened, you know, in North Africa in relation to what happened in Oaxaca, what you know, there's a kind of like a processes emerging of tactics of ways that let's say whatever we're calling movements these kind of uprisings also learn learning from each other but signaling some some elements that are needed that are not you know adequate in, in terms of responding whether it's uh, the large ensembles the state the spaces that were given so i wonder I mean, when we got into, because you were asking about Sylvia's work, Federici and George, and they've done a lot of work around commons, of course. And I think our way of tr kind of arriving to commons was more uh, radical than just thinking about them as like common resources or something like, uh, but really seeing like, seeing it as a kind of means of our reproduction, which includes everything, you know, our, if the old, like uh, Peter Leinbach says, if the old kind of struggles were around the kind of owning the proletariat and owning the means of production, like how do we recover these kind of means of reproducing our lives communally? And I think if I could say that something still is very valid and what those occupations show is when you kind of reclaim space and you kind of inhabit space together you reclaim the that capacity of autonomy to reproduce your life together rather than these kind of individualized beings who are part of a movement and then go back to their kind of isolated structures of living and so the force of those occupations i find is like a is also this force of collectivization and communalization of the daily reproduction. And once you get to that point, it feels to me you're way, you're very, you're formidable. Because, you know, I don't, I, I feel that that's our horizon. And that has pushed us also to really looking more and more towards like rural place, places and thinking struggle through kind of combining rural and uh, city, you know, and trying to understand what kind of new movements that can occur through that circulation and reclaiming our capacity to reproduce our lives autonomously to selling our labor. And um, that means kind of also getting out of bad habits that we, we're part of movements, but at the end, we're and there are a lot of experiments, people finding ways to share accounts, money, earnings, you know, there's so many different creating ethics for one another. When we do earn uh, money, <laughs> how do we kind of redistribute it to the spaces that are nour nourishing us, that are collective and common? So I feel that, that that's kind of what we've been experimenting with. and thinking more through this kind of question of transversality, uh, which is beyond just uh, intersectionality, I think it's also like intersubjective, trans individual, like you had written in one of the texts. I mean, uh, going beyond um, a kind of in, in individualized bodies, but trying to think uh, and reclaim this we, you know, because it's been a dirty word in left politics other than in this kind of universalist sense because community and Irene mentioned Jean-Luc Nancy I mean maybe our affinity to even invite him in these recent assemblies was that 
his, his writings among others around community in the late 80s and 90s were also important for our uh, beginnings as a space, which was like trying to think this failure of communism uh, and the, the invocation and use of the we of the, the community, you know, the community. And so this idea of, uh, uh, you know, what is this, what it, how can we reclaim that community or common or the co and uh, has been another part of our uh, response to what it would the dissatisfaction of being an individual, being a self, being a, you know, a, one entity in a competitive field of, you know, even in, in, in politics. I mean, we saw it even during Occupy, you know, people kind of reverting, even in the context of struggle to, I don't know, becoming individuals, you know, leaders, spokespersons. Uh, okay, it's possible that in moments tactically you, you may need that, but then what kind of ethics do we have to guard against capture you know if somebody earns a lot of money from that for example writes something how do we circulate that in a in an interesting way you know and even in the context of the movement the movement in that occupied there was loads of money that were donated and money became the main issue like for a lot of people what's good? and in a way i mean we we actually some people thought, oh, let's find a way to funnel it into the space. You guys are doing the work. And we actually like uh, resisted that because we felt like, and we'd be like profiteers of this, you know? So probably the money went to far worse places, probably. I don't know. But uh, I don't think it was up for us to obsess about it. So I think, in a way, that's the big challenge that I see is in this time of the pandemic, maybe like rethinking this question of back to the land movements that we've been thinking through for more than 10 years now, and thinking maybe this could be like a hybrid form where we don't get isolated, we can be virtually together a lot across spaces, but very embodied and situated also in formerly you know, neglected sites of capital, let's say, places where we could win back more autonomy and kind of reconfigure communal uh, existence, but also through these networks of, or meshworks and weavings of communities in other places, maybe create more possibilities of circulation, of art, of a real, like, beyond counterculture, like culture that is not capitalist, <laughs> you know? art and music and theater, but like not, you know, going through the, the main structures uh, that exist, that, that valorize and certify that. And that includes a university. So I don't know. I mean, that there is a kind of horizon still that we're connected to that I don't, I didn't want to just historicize 16 Beaver. I think we're, we still feel young in that, like Arno was saying, I mean, we, you know, in the sense of like also continuing to experiment and, and find with other people, younger comrades, older comrades, what's the life we've been kind of struggling to create with one another. That is also not going to be isolated, which some of those commune and communal experiences resulted in enclosures in certain sense. So um, I, I feel like that's kind of, what we we could be thinking through and seeing the traps of what keeps us from that you know what's the fear of doing that you know do we not know how to grow our own food or are we scared we'll be farmers or you know we're too connected to the city well i mean maybe we could find ways to to like we did in the space like have a smaller studio uh, and have more communal space, maybe we need to reconfigure our living situation in the urban context, you know, um, to, to accommodate some other part of our life. You know? And so we, we know a lot of people that are experimenting with like permaculture, also around cities, 
like Brussels and you know so that it's it's I think I don't know I feel that that's really if we talk about commons or it's one of the kind of anchors of where we've been together with some comrades thinking it's more around kind of reclaiming autonomy around how we reproduce our life and uh, trying to increase that uh, dimension of autonomy collectively. I don't know, you know. Yeah. Then, then the process will teach us and whatever we don't know, we've got to learn and think through. And so it's a constant learning process because there's a lot to undo. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Um, yeah, I'm interested, like, you were already kind of hi uh, hinting towards, you know, some kind of criticisms of Occupy. And I guess you also know, you know, a lot of people, you know, from, you know, the, in Spain, the 15M movement, or in, in Greece, or in the, you know, with Arab Spring. Do you think, uh, you know, is, is it possible to draw some conclusions or, you know, like kind of some of the failures of the problems that maybe with a bit of distance one can see, you know, w w you know, what kind of problems went wrong and, you know, like, you know, maybe some of the limitations of direct democracy at given points. Uh, and then, you know, also I uh, will be interested to hear if you see a connection between, you know, some of that kind of failures or, or, or problems or limitations, you know, of all the kind of illusions that Occupy generated among other movements, but then, you know, from, you know, them afterwards, you know, at the end of the decade or towards in the middle of the decade, you start to get a more, you know, fascist, you know, extreme right wing kind of, uh, do you see that perhaps maybe some of the failures or the disenchantment that came out of some of these movements made, you know, people, you know, especially maybe young people, you know, uh, yeah, it took them into, you know, considering, you know, a more right wing or hardcore right wing or extreme right wing or whatever you want to call it, tendency. This is a speculative question. I can attempt something to, I mean, I, I would just try to question the question, Martin, about the question of the failure and the limitations of direct democracy, whatever direct democracy might be. But if there, if there were limits uh, um, to occupy, I mean, okay, let's, let's say this, there are different uh, forces and uh, some that are within this movement, amorphous, whatever one wants to call Occupy, and there is the force of the state and the force of the army and the force of the police. So let's say in New York, what we witnessed, the, the, the definite limit came, that's the big, big limit came from the police. And maybe I always, big. a huge one, they, they tried once and everybody came to support. And then they, they, they used the time when there was a lot of rain and they closed the bridges, they called the army. This was during Obama administration. So it is quite, uh, you understand how massive this attack. And then, I mean, Rene knows more about the media story and how the alt-right started and how actually the fabrication of these bigger people, they do take, they do look at Occupy and say, well, look at them, this is what they're doing. Maybe we need to kind of do something. And for me, this do something, it's what? You know, it is, it is maybe a little limit on, on the movement, but it's not a limit that we should have done it differently. It's a, it's a limit that relates to our discussion today because it is the, precisely the question of subjectivation which is the, the, mic, the question of the micro-political. This limit that we spoke about, this, this big fo police force, that's more connected to the macro-political. Well, we don't live in one or the other. Both are, we are experiencing. And so the limits of the, of the subjectivity, whatever 
whatever we experience, including our own possibly subjectivity, the limit of language, it comes because everybody is coming from a dissatisfaction, but it's a process and, and there are different kind of arrival at a language that's adequate for the situation of a relation that's horizontal, that is adequate to the, what one aspires as so-called direct democracy. But then you have people coming from a non-profit industrial complex. Of course, they realize, well, I don't feel uh, connected to this. I don't want this, right? They go into Occupy, as an example. But their language, everything, they have been subjectivized through going to work every day, through all these values that they accumulate, uh, adapt, whatever. So there is an undoing that is as important as the doing. And it's, 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 a, it's not like, I am not saying as a judging person, it's more as an observation, because everything we do, everything we experience affects whatever subjectivity we become or in becoming. So in a way, yes, there was limits, of course, but the ultimate one that, that prohibited this kind of experimentation was the big ensemble. And guess what? All of them, including the, uh, this part that is more liberal, they take the 99%, they try to go with it into something, and then you have the more fascistic right wing, whatever one wants to call, they do take it, absorb the desire for something, and they inject it in the sphere of the new media because it's very easy nowadays. You can inject all kinds of sorry to say, garbage in there, and there is receptors for that, you know? So in a way, one has to analyze it better. This is not very thorough analysis, honestly. This is more based on observation that is humble. I would keep it in there because one has to... to Get into detail. It is important, this, you know, the, the question of how, how the colonization of desire has been going on for, for a lot of time. Well, I would say it's like the, you, you know, if you talk about the larger mm -hmm. ensembles and uh, this, you know, I mean, beyond the, the square itself, I mean, the, and I'm only speaking about New York, but in every case, it, it had its similarities. I mean, the way that they, you saw it unfold in terms of the struggles around black life uh, over, over these last months, I mean, the way the police uh, kind of target each and every protest follow you. I mean, they they signal people randomly or very strategically. Uh, one each protest at a time, methodically taking people out, putting charges against them, putting them into court, kind of like almost like a game, taking people out of the struggle because if they would get arrested one more time, they'll get into trouble, the lawyers tell them. See? So it, it, there were in that long arc, a lot of challenges, challenges people ran into with rent, with how am I 24 hours involved in this movement? How the hell do I kind of pay my bills? So there were a lot, and, and ultimately, I think what Irene is talking about is another, the, the question of subjectivation is like, well, those, those larger ensembles aren't just like there as realities, they're also producing us. So those larger ensembles are inside us. I mean, we, they produce values, ethics, ways that we're working against. But also, uh, but I mean, I want through these spaces of autonomy, but sometimes to contradict myself, not to contradict, just to add one thing. It's also uh, they produce lies, they produce beliefs in a way that we start to believe. Well, maybe this movement was wrong. You know, so there is also. I mean, I am not sure. Sorry to interrupt, but I'm not sure how how true it is that there is this. I mean, how much it is. It, I mean, I don't think it's the same also people. I mean, I just think of like, okay, life, like Black Lives Matter movement came in this moment. And so there, the movement is there. It just needs to come up. But also this question of subjectivation. I mean, I know I'm not coherent right now. I just no, <laughs> I mean, uh, but, but let's say the question of subjectivation in terms of these larger ensembles. I mean, certain uh, things that we saw as limits 
have to do with kind of this you know the capitalism is not just capitalism it's racialized it's gendered right so i think some of those limits definitely uh played into the 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 broke solidarities uh the i i alluded to it in terms of this kind of uh pressures of people to survive but also the, the the pressures that come from wanting speakers spokespersons voices i mean i remember a moment in 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 zuccotti in the kind of peak of the thing a group of like reporters one from new york times one from time magazine i mean it was like they were i don't know bunched together <laughs> walking through the park and they said they came to irene and i and says, uh, you know, some people pointed us, pointed to you and gave us your names and, you know, uh, can you say what, things about the movement? And we said, absolutely not. I mean, uh, you know, and then I remember something to the effect, well, every, every movement needs like people, like leaders, spokespeople, like if you don't do this, like they were like educating us. If you don't do this, like then the whole thing like suffers, you know, coming from their liberal dispositive of what they think like movement should be and what. So I I'm just trying to say like, but there we had a whole like communal becoming. We had a whole way of trying to like get beyond leaders and thinking politics in a different way and avoiding the traps of capture that just basically will destroy the movement as soon as there is this spokesperson or leader and you know but but as you as you saw i mean it's not i mean our friend david graber has passed away um sadly and we we mourn his loss but david in a way did end up stepping up among others um and we were not uh upset with him you know because at, at, in that moment i mean if there had to be some 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 people like okay let it be david it's better than like a lot of other people who would just speak nonsense let's say he, he had prepared himself in the context of struggle and movement maybe to, to almost he was like he martyred himself to be like one of that you know because it, it a lot of weight then fell on him but and i'm not quite sure how it, you know, I think he, he handled it the best he could, you know, but communally it was hard, like we didn't have a communal way to, to handle it, really, to discuss it, to think through it, to also support him in a certain way, uh, and also for him to feel that he wasn't like uh, taking advantage either. So I think that there are, there are also moments where we got, we, we have to think through those things more collectively and we're not generally we i don't know but habituated to to do that and uh the the question of these spaces and the aesthetic or artistic dimension is also that that's where it is i mean how do you create like a process of getting capitalism out of your body let's say or the you know co the colony out of your body or the patriarchy out of your body or, you know i feel like that there is a that we have to go towards a more full experimentation uh, and we need spaces for that kind of it's not going to happen virtually you know uh, it's bodily it's uh, cooking together but also like uh, maybe doing some somatic things and so I feel like uh, still very excited about this virtual capacity of meeting but more as a way of trying to help us if we go you know towards more experimentation and you know not not forcing ourselves to survive in in a commodified existence one uh, one thing i noticed that was pretty re remarkable after occupy wall street was um uh there was like a new wave of spaces uh, in the city and groupings and uh uh it like uh I, although like let's say the that movement was in some sense defeated uh, i think the uh the the kind of 
common values and forms of political subjectivization that many experienced in that moment very much uh, were carried on into like um, kind of re-enchanting the city, uh, which was actually quite barren uh, for many before Occupy, with the exception of, yes, yeah, say 16 Beaver and a few other spots, but there was a bit of a new kind of uh, uh, gust of uh, energy that came. And it kind of, yeah, puts me back into this uh, uh, nice phrasing uh, uh, had about, um, I mean, in a very simple way, yeah, space, collective spaces are a way that uh, we can uh, kind of uh, seize and, uh, and put to use uh, resources for uh, the interest of our common reproduction. And, uh, but that's a small way that we do that. And there's various things, I think, as Irene put up, that we run up against in trying to expand it. And maybe when I say movements, movements are these moments of kind of where the general ordering of space and time and our days, endings and beginnings of days kind of breaks down. And so like maybe these small pockets of, let's call them spaces, open up into bigger possibilities of seizing much more expansive uh, territories of time and uh, relationships uh, in the ways that cities are disrupted and uh, uh, strikes against normal kind of uh, regimentations of our days uh, commence. Um, and uh, yeah, that's a, that's a nice thing. <laughs> also just to think like how Occupy is like a experience of like collective, a, a process where, you know, some like collective subjectivation, like of our own making, you know? So movement, if we call it movement, whatever it is, re revolt, uh, an, an uprising, there are these moments where you learn very fast new ways of relating to the social space. The, the physical space of the city, you you have a totally different use of it together. And so I think uh, these kind of smaller spaces are ways of also just creating the, the fabric that can support and hold in those moments where some, you know, the conjunctures where something like that explodes into the social field. And I think if we come back to what you were asking, Martin, uh, you know, we've been also looking at like the history of kind of looking at fascism historically. And uh, I think there, there definitely is some aspect of fascism that we have to really re re recall in the context of struggle, which is that it is a kind of counter-revolutionary uh, force. So it's a kind of reaction to communist, anarchist, uh, socialist, uh, organizing, syndicalist organizing. And so in a way, it is a kind of, uh, there are different ways of giving an account, but certainly to see it as this kind of uh, attempt to capture aspects of the needs, dissatisfaction of those movements, and to kind of wrap it up in a pop using a toolkit you know it could be nation blood religion whatever to kind of like capture that into a molar large ensemble kind of politics so i feel you know uh definitely you know in the context of occupy i mean i give this example of steve bannon making a film about occupy or even the way they this right wing discredits soros and then try to pin the Occupy on Soros because of ad busters and them also stepping up and over crediting themselves in that process. But, um, you know, which continues till now, the Soros attacks. I mean, we're all against this kind of neoliberal philanthropy, uh, philanthropy as well, but they capture that and turn it into, you know, molar politics. We're all against like the hospital politics and pharmaceuticals. They capture that and turn it into 
So we're against like finance capital, but they capture it and call them the globalists. And what do they want? Some kind of nationalized capital. But it's not even true because like someone like Trump is global, you know? So, or they use anti-Semitism in the case of Soros. Meanwhile, you know, Orban and these people wrote the school book and they're completely anti-Semitic and they're very pro-Israel. You know, they're com completely Zionist. So they, they're completely playing on these, uh, on, uh, on these dissatisfactions, critiques, and capturing them. And I think if we look at fascism less as a kind of like one, but in the multiplicity of Franco and uh, Mussolini and all these manifestations, uh, you, you know, Umberto Eco wrote a text called Ur Fascism. I have a lot of problems with it because it's still very liberal in its orientation, but it certainly tries to remark about this ad hoc part of fascism, which I think is, is accurate that it's a kind of like a toolkit for molar counter-revolutionary politics. And I think we're living also through that. It can be some aspects of the shortcomings of the movement, but I think it's much more about the capacity to capture it. And, and in a way, Sanders was another attempt by through a party politics to capture that dissatisfaction as well. So, you know, you can, you can, see see that aspect yeah and i think it's the question of, of of failure i have a little failure and and defeat is a little disturbing are disturbing for me not because i don't like defeat or failure it's more what does it mean when we say it which language are we speaking when we say oh this was a defeat this was a failure because then it's like what is a success and what is victory you know and uh so in a way, if you think of, of May 68 and uh, the after effects, how also the, the, the kind of repression came heavier, but in a very different, diff very different modes and ways. And so, but also how, how people who are analyzing and thinking and doing things on the ground changed in relation to 68 and it was a process beyond this month of may 68 let's say in a certain place so for me the question is how is it for us occupy how does it how has it and how is it still affecting our relation to what we are doing what we are how we are relating to each other and our discussion is not far from that so that is uh, an important thing not to uh, give in to this kind of notion of time that is segmenting and separating and isolating this as something that has passed and finished. More also to feel that we are actually waiting for another moment where it's nothing and nobody can predict when we are always in preparation whether we will be seeing that moment or not it doesn't matter because yes some of us will see that moment and in a way for me occupy was that kind of moment of break and opening that we were in a way fortunate enough to feel to see to experience and that is extremely valuable these moments will in uh, will are eternal they will always be there they will always uh come the question is whether we will uh, i i be I, adequate <laughs> also whether we will recognize them no whether we will because for some people occupy came and went and it was nothing that is sad to to witness for some people it's sad so in a way, it is also the traject, the notion and feeling of history that is not packaged in a in a linear way and covered and closed everything. This is finished. This is done. What comes next? It's a field. It's a. It's our time of. But if we think like uh, the feminist movements, uh, the struggles around like colonial and thinking through like decolonization, uh, the strength of also uh anti-capitalist kind of thinking in more and more like young younger people uh thinking beyond individualism 
I mean, all this stuff is like all around us that I don't want to be like hyper <laughs> positive. I mean, I know that on the molar and the large ensemble level, things are pretty drastic and, and uh, ecological destruction. I mean, all kinds of things. But but I really feel, you know, there is some something totally different than what we inherited. Like uh, it, it on on that level maybe we're fooling ourselves because it's kind of stuff we are interested in and we see but we we find a lot of younger people like interested in things that we've been we, we're interested in which is amazing you know um and and more even more kind of proposing more radical things and trying experimenting more radical things and that's always i think what you if there is a success for me, it's that. It's that people who are coming from the like younger generation are actually proposing even more radical things than you could. Uh, pushing the language further, push, pushing the thinking further towards whatever you've been inspiring, aspiring toward. And that's a better trajectory. And I'm not, in, this is close to me getting progressive, but I'm not at all progressive in that, what I'm saying. I'm just saying more intensification of imminent aspects of what we all want, which is to be more free, less uh, kind of enslaved, and uh, by ourselves also, by whatever the, the prison of the self, the prison of the individual. And uh, I feel that, that, that whether we're adequate to have given or uh, remarked about the challenges of that process, maybe we need to devote more work to including Occupy, but even our spaces like 16 Beaver or what Arno was discussing in his experiences. I mean, I do think we need to do some work to analyze, you know, we didn't eventually get evicted from our space, but we didn't fight that last battle. Because we felt at this point, fighting to pay an exorbitant rent in the city as this being hyper commodified, like we'll, we'll, it, it seemed totally inadequate to the experience of, of, of occupying everything we went through to fight to pay rent. You know, so we had to kind of let go. Mm. In other moments, we did fight to pay rent, but then we're happy because we were there to, to, to be there in the context of, you know, something like Occupy to happen. But afterwards, it felt like we need to move, move to a different way. We need to find a different way to, you know, and I think maybe if we meet on Sunday together, we can try to invite some other folks and spaces that yeah. are trying to think this other way. Uh, what is it going to be? How are we going to do this? Because... I think uh, this rent extraction and, uh, you know, it's, it's a major part of what is hindering our, our struggles, you know, um, and for autonomy and collectivization of our, so I don't know, Mary's there showing the video, so she's been also involved in space and in these struggles that we're talking about, so I don't know. With the mask, she she wanted to add some notes. Hi, friends, near and far. Um, I'm actually at the Graduate Center, and uh, I had to time a visit here at the same time as this meeting, so I've not been able to be fully present while I'm here, and that's also why I'm masked. Um, so uh, I'm not sure if I have anything to say right now. <laughs> but uh, I'm also not sure. Is, is, oh yeah, sure, just one thing though. On Sunday, what time is, is the meeting? Is that 11 or 10? 11. We've, we've 11. 11, okay. Um, yeah, but, but if yeah. it's better to do it earlier. Okay. We should. Uh, no, I think 11, uh, by the, you're okay. So do 11. Okay. 
Yeah. yeah, I think it's, it's because it will be six at ours. So and then we, yeah, we're starting to invite people. And so far, Mama and Zagreb will join, who's doing the pirate care syllabus, which is a really nice thing during the pandemic. And so maybe a few other spaces as well. We're waiting to hear. So, yeah, it should be really nice. One thing I wanted to say, just to turn things back to the Lithuanian context a bit, and about this intergenerational, um, not, uh, intensifications uh, and like uh, yeah like one thing that's really astonishing uh, about our context uh, and our histories is um, the library and uh, like pamphlets that have uh, collected and it was a major um, effort of many different people who came I think over a decade and longer to uh, build like a, an autonomous circulating library, but also to yeah feel like from the different countries they lived in that they went for work and came back and so many different places brought pamphlets and uh, uh, zines and autonomous uh, literature uh, and we have like uh, such a actually amazing collection. Um, and uh, yeah, and it's such a nice uh, kind of resource of uh, uh, that's been kind of uh, built through common uh, processes uh, and uh, uh, relations. So, uh, I would, <clears throat> no, I would just add that it's, uh, I would say uh, it's 20 years. Uh, oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Time flies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does. It does. <laughs> yeah, but that's uh, yeah. We have uh, such a it's a it's a nice thing, and yeah. Now at our uh, at Luna and at Emma, we have uh, the inheritance of uh, this collection and this common like uh, uh, kind of efforts. Uh, and now we're still trying to build the library, and actually, yeah, it's pretty nice. To, we have some publishers that are donating books for us, and so, yeah, that's a good thing. But yeah, so. I mean, there's so much to, to talk about, but I think yeah. we didn't even get close to like uh, some of the outlining the challenges that uh, that we see also through the experience closer to my teens i mean not in terms of failure as as much as limits or challenges that we've seen that i think are really you know and like you mentioned publishers and i mean i think we need to figure out ways to uh hold accountable one another to our like the promises that we are making to one another in a way like and I'm not talking about it's like how do we make ourselves more uh, yeah intensify our commitments towards what we're struggling towards you know so people who publish like uh, political writings and thought like what what could they give towards more even more autonomous spaces and organizing what could they so like really trying to enhance this uh dimension of our communism in in terms of like from each according to their abilities to their needs and trying to find ways not to formalize that but really think think about those more uh what is this kind of communist ethics that is not a state or a something someone's going to organize things for you uh, or anarchist ethics or feminist ethics or you know the colonial ethics I, I think we need to really think on those levels more and try to uh, you, you know practice them in our spaces with one another and and when we see a contradictions emerging find ways to talk about them that's the the assembly is for is among other things for that you know so finding ways to to assemble think through go beyond the uh, problems of personhood and think about them as kind of common challenges but also 
maybe common notions, you know, that we can share with other comrades who might be struggling around similar issues. So the kind of innovations have to happen through what we confront along the way. So I think if there's maybe our risk in not doing that sufficiently is like you don't want to be backward looking <laughs> in a way. But as I said, I think we have to get out of that temporality of forward and backward and just think in terms of, you know, intensities and, uh, you know, things that enhance the capacities of what you're orienting towards and struggling through and diminish. And if we think about those forces that diminish our capacity to collectivize, uh, to create more of the autonomy, then, then it's not a backward looking thing at all, you know, it's, it's, so I think we, I'm trying to talk myself into that process of also, let's say, risking looking back, but not in the sense of what Arne was saying, like, we don't want to historicize ourselves, because, I mean, I, I feel in the middle, you know, mm -hmm. with, with all of uh, everyone assembled here, including, yeah. Yeah, thanks so much. I'm going to have to go, but uh, yeah, I wanted to say thank you and yeah, I'm really yeah, the conversation yeah. continues. Nice to see thanks. you again. Yeah. So, yeah, so I guess. Um, also, resume on Sunday. This is yeah, in a more open. Yes. Yeah. You know, if people are watching the stream, you can join us. Yeah, and well, I mean, it also enter, I guess, into a more of a present uh, tense. Uh, uh, path of autonomy, which is, uh, yeah, how to deal with our both physical and non-physical collectivities and spaces in the present. And hopefully it'll be a bit constructive moment for us because here in Lithuania, uh, yeah, we're going into a heavy lockdown tomorrow and our spaces are in limbo and a lot of questions are coming up. So to hear stories and experiences and strategies and share between us in an in international context uh, seems like a really healthy thing to do at the moment. So I'm happy for everyone to join. Yes, thank you everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking, yeah, uh, any, any, it would be nice to hear some other last thought, maybe before closing, so instead of if anybody had it. I guess not the last thought because it, it comes like um, extension to another question, which uh, would be nice to touch upon on Sunday again, like of thinking about this, you know, uh, we have various forms of spaces. And like you mentioned, you know, uh, uh, the question of kind of division between art spaces and like political spaces or political organizing spaces, you know, which is it's always a, a question also for us even in this series, you know, of like past autonomy, because we do kind of uh, go around, you know, these questions of like, so what belongs to, you know, like what is artistic organizing, cultural organizing, what is, you know, what belongs to the political field and we're, you know, we're, by no means we don't like we don't have any answers on that but like for me because i do come from you know from a like cultural and artistic field but uh, also working through um kind of what's called independent spaces which is uh, you know uh, uh, an almost impossible or like it's almost like a conundrum in a sense uh, that uh, we're still calling ourselves that but uh, you know just i think what, what you were talking about sparked a lot of um you know like um yeah thinking up about these art art spaces and special independent art spaces and especially of a question that I've I've been having for a very long while about this kind of promise of uh, false or maybe, I don't know promise of some permanency that art spaces independent art spaces also strive for and it, and one of the last things you mentioned about you know uh, so if there is a, a certain struggle comes to a space uh then is it actually more uh, of a value to struggle for 
you know, to participate in this rent extractivism, as you said, you know, like to just by all means just to stay in, in that like urban location, uh, to, to keep participating in that game that you, you know, you kind of have to then and you, and you put yourself through that struggle instead of maybe trying to find another forms of, of gathering, you know, and you mentioned this very, very nicely, you know, like assembly as a form also of, of, of coming together in, in, in a way. So for, for me, I just see a lot of, um, Mm, kind of yeah um things that do not exclude artistic spaces as such because of course there's more to museum more than museums or galleries because like one of the biggest struggles especially in the more gentrified european cities has been also from my colleagues you know the the very struggle for for a, a physical space because it becomes the the very the very existence of it um yeah and strive to, you know get the space to pay a rent and just and to be there of course, it's not a, a futile goal uh, to to maintain a physical location for this gathering of bodies, but um, I think there is a need to rethink of um, yeah to rethink the, the the way of existence. Mm. And I think uh, with your space, Cabinetas. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> was yeah collaborating uh, with uh, Luna Six on this series and also uh, like another. Um, uh, 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 kind of educational series and well, different stuff uh, this year it started uh, yeah I mean I think for Luna 6 one thing that Cabinetas really importantly introduced was like uh, this uh, a bit you know, like you have a bit more kind of um, you have like a a language and really nice sense of like a sensibility for organizing and like a uh, online or kind of differently embodied understanding of space and social processes and this kind of stuff. So I think through our encounter, there's been quite an interesting exchange that I don't think would have otherwise uh, happened uh, without like the particular histories of you having a space and then not having a space. And you kind of use that language for us in a very important mm -hmm. way. So, yeah. Yeah, because that was, I was maybe I was supposed to mention that, yeah, I'm running a space that doesn't have a physical space anymore. And this is a kind of, what was a self-made decision in, in a sense, like one of our necessity, but became a decision that became completely okay. So, and this is the question that follows is, <laughs> yeah, is that, is that okay? And maybe, yeah, it brings exactly. another sensibility, but yeah, it's for bigger yeah, discussion. Yeah. And I think like, yeah, there wasn't this pandemic, of course, things probably would have spatially happened like a bit more oriented towards Luna 6 and, uh, uh, but uh, everything changed as we know. And uh, yeah, now we're talking with, uh, I don't know, Mary and uh, Renee and Irene and <laughs> that's kind of interesting. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. okay. I mean, it's a small uh, note just to, Add to what Lida was saying, a couple of things came to my mind. Of course, everyone who will be there could remember it differently, but because of the space, I remember it uh, very well. That after the first assembly, which was near 16 Beaver at the, uh, you know, you know, lower Manhattan, near the Bull, that was supposed to be to think about this occupation that was called and uh, of Wall Street. Uh, on August 2nd, I think. I think I'm not going to eat in the camera. What? Uh, <laughs> we didn't eat breakfast, sorry. Oh. <laughs> no. Uh, there was a decision, where will the next one be, the assembly? And some some bodies proposed 16 Beaver. We, we had met already there before that, uh, some days before. And then, you know, through the intelligence of, uh, of various people who were also involved in the space, you know, that the advocacy was like, no, let's keep it in just kind of public, so-called public spaces, you know. Uh, let's do all the assemblies outside. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think those moments are, are like seminal, you know. Because the intuition was like, if we take it now to our space, whatever it is, it would, won't, you know, it'll stay like domesticated somehow. Even if we, we saw our spaces like 
not a com it was a common space or after the fact it was different but just to you know say like those small decisions sometimes and that kind of using the space to to assemble that is you know in the city is also something that we shouldn't give up like uh and 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 uh, but the assembly that that it was happening in a regular way and being called that was something that of course you know was was seminal the other small note is like i really think like questions of like care healing learning um you know even sort of body practices spiritual practices food related things I mean, there's so many levels that I think that movement space might limit in terms of like what it is we need. It's uh, that space can also host a movement, you know, when it's needed. But it's there are many more things that are needed in terms of this communalization of life and uh, and creating the conditions of autonomy. I feel that so we've been calling it like a transversality. That, that this space, this kind of uh, place of also subjectivation, of uh, creating the, or desubjectivation, you know, uh, or, or creating ourselves in a new way with others, seems that that's uh, kind of what, 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 what you said prompted thinking that way. And, uh, that's why art for us, if it if it has a space in that, it's really at the heart because it's not like a rarefied field or something, uh, you know, in, in its expanded sense, music, poetry, uh, their ways of like uh, dancing, uh, their ways of just reorganizing our sensible uh, terrain. I don't want to sound like Jacques Rancière right now. <laughs> Something else. <You're> just, <laughs> our way, you know, they're reconfiguring our our relation to ourselves and those bodies around us. Let's say, and so and and also this capacity to 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 generate, create kind of new ways of of, of being. And I think we all were vernacular processes are full of that. You know, so we don't have to look only in the art field for that. It just, but it's an important dimension of our existence that we need to affirm rather than uh, kind of diminish in or some sort of kind of social country. realism or instrumental relation to art. It's like we need to make it kind of unsettle our every day. And uh, I think having that dimension in a space is also something that is really important for us in our own experience it's like using the term of like by sarah pierce like but not by sarah pierce but who thought about it and she she thought thought trublin shows an available community which is quite you know even when you think about art and like art artworks and people who come and visions and archives and all of that that surround you know a certain like event it's not available to that one event and maybe not even not a space i'm thinking that because when you have a question of something manifesting and does it need really necessitate bringing that and allowing that to certain space certain political space certain art space where that will become part of it and become will become vocalized through that you know it will take up also the vocabularies or a certain space as well and i think you know this uh this always yeah this question maybe it is better to to just keep on with yeah being the unavowed in a sense not 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 creating the structured finalized belonging to to uh, a certain historical period certain way of thinking certain space or certain people even because um it's not about yeah also who stays in as a certain community just tied to one project political event you know in the history um but like what comes through that um yeah. yeah it's another important strain of thought in the early considerations we've had also and it still remains Lencho's text and thinking around community which 
Yeah, so I mean, we're trying to think that those kind of leftist uh, also orientations of thinking community more and more through kind of limits of that also through a more decolonial lens, let's say, you know, which is a whole other chapter, but we're in that space right now of trying to think that. Um, but I also thought, for instance, like uh, we, we were, we have been artists and many people who came through this space and, and, and organized have been artists, but, uh, you know, we succeeded, for instance, not, I mean, one of, let's say, talking about successes and failures, Alamatin, it's like, uh, we've been in New York and we've been doing that. And at the same time, I don't know, you can hardly find us mentioned in any mainstream New York art kind of journals or magazines and, you know, and I consider that like one of our great successes, you know, because we, we kept ourselves kind of visible to the communities we were interested in and fought enough against like getting captured in a certain way. I mean, that isn't, it's not going to be forever because we know like, there's always a historians who dig things up and reinscribe them into their narratives. But I just mean that there is some, some efforts one makes in terms of this avowable, unavowable that are also in relation to capture and uh, fixing of meaning. You know, it's not exactly about not, not having a community. It's also can be just about not being fixed, closed, uh, captured. So it seems to us like uh, that's part of the challenge. <laughs> Can I just add something, uh, sure. maybe not entirely related, but somewhat in this direction? <clears throat> I think also uh, what interested me uh, throughout the years is uh, these sort of um, endless questions, especially when it maybe involves a little bit of a certain illegality or so on. So there is a bit of tension already in the place, no setup in the setup. But I think that one is only one element, but the other element is in the kind of uh, the constant uh, discussions about, uh, you know, not to be, not to be isolated, not to be too cliquish, not to be too subcultural, not to be, you know, irrelevant, not to be um, too small, not to be self-absorbed and so on and so on. And then this whole opening, like, the, so how, how and to whom and on what terms um, the larger opening and the appeal should be made and so on. And I think these obviously are super important questions uh, and discussions, but I think there is also a little bit of a danger sometimes, and this is why maybe I'm commenting, uh, that, um, you know, not to lose uh, sight of this sort of, uh, you know, that it should be, in my opinion, it should be uh, an oppositional space and it shouldn't be um, ashamed of that. And I think through um, being actually and doing what you really want, uh, there will be certain kind of appeal. It will never appeal uh, to everyone. But I think the danger is that some spaces maybe by thinking, um, you know, to have a larger appeal then start uh, sort of, uh, self-police or to you know soften its own uh, discourses and its own ambitions and then they say you know but you can do this because it will be more interesting to more people not let's not be you know too esoteric too theoretical too radical to this to that and i think if you go this path then basically this whole idea to me of the autonomous space let's say or you know whatever way you want to call it uh, it really loses its own uh, sort of reasons for existence and then it becomes basically just another space 
where it happens and you know the, the, the sort of terms of a social center or something i mean you have many thousands of social centers you know every place where people gather in some ways you know everything is social and and so on but i think uh yeah so you know and let's say in the urban environments especially in the like capital cities or important cities or just so so called you know metropolis and so on i think there are so many of the sort of integrating assimilating sort of pacifying domestifying domesticating influences that the, the the urban life just by its own sort of uh, rhythms of circulation uh that draws subjectively so much already and if you don't have these kinds of spaces you know they they don't need to be just therapeutic but i think these are the at least in, for me ideally it seems that okay you have something that is not compromising you know something that really it's it's an open space to to push the limits uh, towards you know critique the to the outside world but also the self critique and the including the critique of this community information no whatever who, whoever gathers um so yeah so i'm just sort of i'm sure we all kind of uh, experience these kinds of things and these thoughts but uh, just to reiterate that uh, you know i think there is nothing wrong with uh, um with pushing the limits and if not these spaces then you know which spaces uh, should be a place for them. Maybe I'll start just, uh, we're doing like a second uh, addendum of the whole thing or postscript, long one, but mm -hmm. everyone's got to go. But definitely that, that resonates strongly, what you're saying. I mean, I feel, again, like with all the modesty that, that whatever uh, we, we experience as occupies like a fragment of something that was really global and came from you know many places and uh, at least we could say that wave could have started with Boazizi in Tunisia and certainly we were very affected by what happened in North Africa in Tunisia and Egypt and we're constantly in that period thinking from the you know what what can we do to be really in solidarity um, and and I think for me anyway, all these debates that happened that you're also talking about, Arno, I think because you, we lived through a period similar um, where there's all kinds of, especially in the US, it's even more intense what you're saying, this kind of pragmatism or idea of reaching more people, scale and all of that. I feel like we found our answer. Maybe it's not universal answer, but the answer was like a lot of that is bullshit you know because i don't think we should underestimate if our like we let's say in july our email was like for general assemblies everywhere when we met i mean the aspiration has to be big <laughs> but we're not going to organize that in a sense and we're not going to create the means of um of, of of people's collectively organizing occupations or do, you know general assemblies but something like that happened you know and i think uh it's neither to take credit but uh at least in our in the local iteration of it it was not uh outside the sphere of what circulated in imaginary and what the aspirations were and what resulted and i feel that we never even reflected long enough on that because there have been so many debates, especially in the, even in the art context of like, uh, finally you arrive at something like the American version of social realism, which is they call social practice, you know, which is like you are an artist, but, and you wanna do something social, but it has to kind of work within the terms that are existing. And I'm not to take away from a lot of artists who are involved and reclaim that notion, even Felix Quattri, who's a comrade, used that notion, so it's not to eliminate it altogether, but the way it's used in practice, uh, in, a, in a kind of normative sense, orients towards accepting the terms. And I think what Arno is saying is like, we can aspire 
to be contagious and to touch many and not to close ourselves, but it's not about shifting our terms. You know, it's about no, kind of, accepting them, yeah, the terms it's about them. actually radicalizing, intensifying, making them more coherent to ourselves and to others and, and letting that be the real contagious force and in trying to make contact with people in that process. So uh, it was very strong, I think, at that point. That it was maybe not to be underestimated, this dance between being close to what your needs are and urgencies are, exigencies are, but at the same time aspiring to be open, not dogmatic or identitarian, you know, uh, trying to articulate more in ethics that you're after, a way, you know, it's closer to a form of life or a, a way of relating to it. We're used to meeting, so we can go on. Forever. I would say that uh, that's a good, good words to end on. Yeah.